we start with Daniel, five year deal. Um, probably a, a, a rare thing in a lot of football codes. What made you want to stay here and I guess not look at other options? Yeah, there's obviously a, a lot of reasons why I'm uh, obviously signed on for five years, um, but for me it was an easy decision and I'm glad it was done before round one. Um, can kind of focus on this season and, and obviously the years to come as well, but exciting group um, and obviously a great place. So I'm really excited about where the club's going at the same time. Um, obviously that reflects the decision in the five years, so yeah, very happy. Did guys like uh, Stefan Martin and Pierce extending and Zorko, like the long term, did that play any sort of role in you deciding you want to stay for such a long period? Oh, I've, I suppose it, it has a small effect. Um, I, I know how well the club is going and, and the direction they're going in, but to see those things happen at the same time um, just reassures your own, own positive beliefs at the same time. So um, they're just to name a few. There's a lot of young guys as well. I think there's been about 11 in the last uh, 6 to 18, 12 months. So um, it's not only me that thinks, thinks the same thing. So it's a good sign, isn't it? What gives you the confidence to, to stay? Oh, it's a whole variety of things. It's it's the list. It's the the stuff happening off the field. Um, it's the the playing group, the staff, the the upstairs staff. Um, but I'm just excited about seeing the improvements in the young guys and where that'll lead in um, six months, twelve months, two years. So um, I just want to be a part of it. Yeah. Do you feel some extra onus on yourself now because it's a lot of faith shown by the club to to sign you up for five years? Like. Um bit of extra sort of responsibility and a bit of onus to, to repay them I guess? Oh, I think that's regardless of, of length of contract or or whatever it may be. I'm, I'm, the fact that I'm a senior player in the team and that just comes with that. Um, one of the, the vice captains of the side as well so um, that happens regardless of those situations in my opinion um, and I would, would have treated it no different so um, yeah I want to I want to lead this younger group forward and get back to where we want to be. Do you see, um, I guess, over the last few years having gone as the club and you, you would have liked, I suppose, but do you see five years within that time that you're a contender? Can you talk about the excitement of the list? Yeah, absolutely. I think we're in a position where we can improve and improve and, and claw our way back up, up to where we want to be, as I mentioned. Um, hopefully it's done before before those five years, and I'm, I'm confident it is, or obviously I wouldn't have signed for five years. It's, it's kind of speaks for itself. So. Um, yeah, really looking forward to all the challenges that come with a young team, but I'm excited more than anything. How about from the club's point of view, Justin, no, and not to rain on Daniel's parade at the moment, but there was a time, of course, where clubs would have been heavily resistant to such long-term deals, and there's four players on the list, I think, on five-year contracts now. Is that a reflection of a new reality in the game, I guess? I think it just reflects on the quality of each individual. I mean, clubs only do deals of that ilk if they think each player deserves it. Um, I think uh, in, in my area, I think there was four or five that were, were on the similar type deals. So, um, you know, clubs want to lock away their best players for as long a term as we can. Um, it's good for everybody. It's good for security. It also shows the public the direction in which the footy club's going and and, um, and we're all in it in the journey together. So um, I think it ticks a few boxes there. And it's obviously great to have Daniel, one of our best players and leaders, um, extend um, and basically be a line for life. And um, you know, I was a one club player and there's no better feeling in, to, to become that. And uh, it's great that Daniel will, will join that, that list as well. Um, and, and we'll have some success in that time for him and give him back the loyalty that he's shown to us as a club. We, we also owe it to Daniel and Rocky and Pierce and guys like that um, that have been around and, and stuck the journey out. We owe them some success, some success as well as a footy club. Is, is it also partially about um, building that impression, especially to the younger players on the list, about a, a, a playing group that's willing to stay the course? Well, you have to. Um, we've tried to um, verbally and also live that course, and, and I think the, the signings uh, of recent hopefully show the players believe in that as well. Um, so I think it just shows there's a lot of good work done uh, behind the scenes, um, and the players see that, uh, and the faith in the direction of the footy clubs uh, the players are buying into. So that's, that's a good sign. Even though we're not where we want to be from a ladder perspective yet, um, we, we're building for something and the players see that, which is good. Danny, what's your perception of the, the club the way it is today, as opposed to a couple of years ago, when there were problems? Yeah, I think, um, I suppose, sta a little bit more stable is probably a word to describe it, um, in terms of an off-field point of view. Um, but the list has gone through a lot of changes at the same time as well, and that was all, always going to be a bit of a process. And I think Leper and um, Swabby and, and those types have done a fantastic job to, to get it in the position it is today. 
Um, yeah, there's obviously a few holes here and there years ago, but I think that's what it's all been about, is uh, I suppose filling a few of those and getting the list into a strong, well-rounded, stable position that we can kind of build on and move forward um, at the same time. So I think when when the, the playing side of it improves out here at the Gabba and, and, and away games, it, it helps a lot of the off-field stuff as well. So that's kind of all we can control as players, and but at the same time, um, you've got the faith of the the off-field, I suppose, side of it. They're doing all they can to, to do um, and support us as players. So um, that's where you have the faith and, and I suppose, the, the success will come down the track. Yeah. Did you want the five or was the club offering the five? Uh, no, it was, it was, I suppose, a bit of both, really. Um, both parties were happy with, um, yeah, five years and it kind of didn't take long at all, to be honest. Um, so it was, uh, it was a pretty stress-free suppose period. It's another brick in the wall for you isn't it? It's, it's been good the last couple of months. Yeah and, and I think probably to go on what Daniel's saying it, it, you know when you're trying to build a stable environment that you know the longer we can lock away just the key pillars of what we're doing is the most important thing. Retain our kids and our, our, our key senior players and I think as a footy club we're doing that. I think that's the start and I think all the good work tends to follow and the wins and start to build from this strong base, so I just really think, and it's something our fans can get excited about, that um, we're buying into people at the organisation and we're going to build some consistency. Um, we don't want phases again where you know young players walk out the door in large quantities. Every team goes through change every year, um, but we want to be the norm in that number, not, not outside of that. Um, and, and I think the last couple of years have proved that. Um, people come and go, um, no doubt, in, in, over every year. It's just what happens. But um, a good culture doesn't, mass, mass changes don't happen. And that hasn't been the case the last couple of seasons. It's sort of the case now that the talking stops, doesn't it? Well, it does. Well, and we, we, we've said that. And our list is in order. We're, we're really happy. We've got all our positions filled. We're young, don't get me wrong. And But it's exciting for our, our fans to know that they can go watch our reserves play and see four or five all Australian kids and some great quality Queenslanders coming through our football club and knowing that, um, you know, in five or six years when Daniel has to hand the baton over, that a, a kid like Ben Keyes is going to be there ready to go and, and, and be the next Tom Rockliffe and, and so on and so forth. So we, we think we've got that system in order really well that we won't be left with voids in the long term. I think that's the most important thing we can we can show to the, and prove to the players that, that we're building something they can believe in. Doesn't get much tougher this weekend though, does it? Yeah, I mean fixturing's the uncontrollable. Uh, injuries, uncontrollable. The bounce of the ball sometimes uncontrollable, but we, we can't worry about that. We um, Look, I'm a believer that if you're going to go to Perth any time, round one's a great time to do it. Um, you know, everyone's new, everyone's a bit unsure of each, each other. And, what they've done over the pre-season and some of the greatest upsets happen in the first three or four rounds. So I'm excited by it and I know the, the boys are. And we go there on a mission. I think we're all ready to go and, and to give everything we've got against West Coast. I know the team's not out yet, but um, people are probably looking at some of the young guys of, you know, who might get a crack early in the season. We, we see a few of them in round one, perhaps? Well, Shaq will play um, this week, um, but uh, he'll probably be the only of the first few players that play. We're, we're in a position now where we were lucky enough to drip feed our, our young kids in now, not expose them, um, as opposed to what happened to you know, Dan McStay and Cuts and Darcy Gardner and guys like that. They were playing long minutes and long game time in their first season. We're, we're probably in a position there with those guys we can bring in a bit more when they're ready. So that's the, also the exciting part of our, our kids. I'll, I'll, we'll drip feed them through as opposed to expo overexpose them. Hey, Josh, obviously, I feel like he's ready. You're going to throw him in the deep end. Yeah, we are. Look, yeah, probably it is throwing the kid into the deep end a little bit, but it, I think he's got the body shape and size and game to be able to compete um, right away. Uh, is he going to be his best ever? Of course, he's not. He's going to be his best when he's 21, 22 plus. We all know that when your when your body size, shape, and maturity reaches. But he's enough to be our, our best contributor. Next, he's our next up starter. So um, that's why he's playing. There's no other reason. Uh, he's shown enough. With his training, there's been pretty wet and windy games for him, so it's been hard for a key forward, but he's shown enough that he's the next up starter and deserves his spot, so we're playing him. You'll have a few guys playing um, that didn't have a pre-season match. Is that a concern going to, to Perth and playing? Yeah, the, team that well, the ones that have are, are experienced players in Rocky, Christensen and Greeny, so, um, so I'm confident that they know, they've been around the AFL system enough to know um, what they're doing. So if it was younger kids, I'd be a bit more worried. Redden, looks like in the start with him. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, he's opposition, isn't he? Um, I haven't paid too much attention, to be perfectly honest. I oh, know they had a game on the weekend and got a few that are coming back from 
from injury. Um, so they're a bit similar to us. We're probably both going with a couple of players uh, that haven't had the run um, that you'll have question marks over. So it's going to be interesting to see how the game ends up. A bit speculative, Richie, but if Reddo plays, how would that be for you? I mean, you got drafted with him and you've played your whole career with him. Possibility of playing against him this weekend? Oh, yeah, it's, it's nothing too different, to be honest. It's similar to when you play in your first few years. You play with guys 16, 17s in junior footy and you, you're good mates with those guys, but you cross the white line and, and nothing changes. It's just a, another opponent, but um, yeah, it'd be good to have a run around if he does play against him. Uh, Beams, what's... Beams is getting better feedback. Um, as a coach, you're always, excuse me, taking the pessimistic approach and putting another month or two on where he should be. So my brain's like, oh, well, we'll just see him in the second half of the year and hopefully um, that happens because you don't want to put any pressure on his on his rehab, particularly with a tendon. But he's having some good news with each day, so that, that's positive. But once again, there's no pressure on his rehab. Those tendons are funny things. Um, sometimes it's two steps forward, one step back which it has been the last month and a half. Uh, the beauty thing people need to know is it's not brand new as of today. It's, it's been a couple of months, so he is a couple of months into that rehab, so it's not like it's just starting from, from scratch. So it can improve quickly and potentially have him back before that period, but um, you know we're, we're taking a very conservative approach.